welcome to my video blog in my studio. I'm Gail Weisfield, a professional watercolor artist. I use a Robert Wood palette, and the reason I like this palette is because it has very deep wells, and they're big enough for me to get my larger brushes into. And the paint doesn't run back out into the palette, and it stays uh, in place. I like a, just a nice plastic palette because it's lightweight, and the Robert Wood palette will snap into the back of the Voga board. So it com colors come in two qualities. They come in student grade or professional. They both have the same pigment in them. They just have more binder and more extender in the uh, student grade. So you have a little less intensity. The pigment is cheaper, but you have less pigment. The professional grade goes a little farther, so it kind of balances itself out. Every time I went to a new class, each teacher gave me a list of colors that they used in their class, and I ended up with a huge amount of color that I didn't know what to do with. And I found as a beginning student, you're a lot better off to keep your colors to a minimum to start with. This way you learn about the qualities of each color, what they do, how they work together, and then you can add colors one at a time as you find necessary or you find a color that you really like. I always use the Queller Color Wheel because his colors are listed in the names that we know that we can match with our paint. Our Burnt Sienna is Burnt Sienna on the Color Wheel. So you should at least arrive with a warm and a cool of the primary colors, red, yellow, and blue. And when you look at your color wheel, you can see that the color wheel is divided with the cool side of the color wheel and the warm side of the color wheel. If your yellow leans closer to the blue side, it's a cool yellow. If it leans closer to the red side, it's a warm yellow. So that's how you're going to identify whether you have a warm or a cool yellow. I use, for my cool yellow, I use a lemon or a cad yellow. And for my warm yellow, I use a new gamboge. For my warm red, I use cadmium red or uh, scarlet lake. A lizard crimson is my cool red. And then when I move into the blues, my blue that's closer to the red is my warmer blue. So this is Antwerp, cobalt. And then cerulean blue is my cool blue. This is also sky blue, so you see I have three blues instead of just two. Cerulean has white in it, but it's a color we use so much in landscape painting that I have to include it within the basic colors that you need to arrive with. Now I need uh, to apply some earth colors and some darks, so I use ultramarine blue, burnt sienna are the two staple colors. I probably use three tubes of these to anything else. Then you need a earth color, a raw sienna, or yellow ochre is a very useful color to have. A lot of people are using quinacridone gold in place of yellow ochre, and that's a nice bright color. And then you might include a neutral tint within your, within your palette. If you're really uh, uh, sure you're going to do this and you want to add some more colors, I find that they have some beautiful jewel-like colors now. And I call these my jewel tints. These colors uh, are the quinacridones. Uh, there are any color that has a jewel quality, like uh, teal, uh, ultramarine, violet, or rose, coral. These colors would be used in flowers, uh, any architectural or man-made item, like an umbrella tent, uh, somebody's clothing. They're wonderful accent colors because they're so brilliant and bright, and they don't really fit into a landscape palette. If you're using these colors, to uh, paint your landscape with, it's going to be uh, a really bright, brightly colored landscape. There's nothing wrong with that, but just to know that these are the, the way we look in the landscape painter as these are the jewel colors. So that's a basic setup with just the six or seven colors here, eight, nine, ten. With ten pigments, you can paint any painting there is. With ten pigments, you could mix over 5,000 colors. All of these colors not some of the jewels can't be mixed from these colors, but all the colors that you'd ever use in landscape can be mixed from these colors. And as you can see, if you look closely at the Queller wheel, from just alizarin, cadmium lemon, and uh, Windsor blue, these three colors will mix every color within the wheel and any other color you want to mix. So start with a few colors and add after you know where you're going.